Hey, it's Nick Moke for Digital Trends, and today we're taking a look at Apple's brand new 27-inch iMac. Now, if you're thinking this looks a lot like the old 27-inch iMac, you'd be right. It's actually exactly the same on the outside. But Apple has equipped it with a lot of new hardware inside, so let's take a closer look. There's really three new things going on inside the Apple iMac this year. The first is that it comes with Intel's latest processors. You can get it with the Core i3, the Core i5, or the Core i7. The second is that the graphics chips have also been upgraded. Apple actually switched from NVIDIA to ATI this year. So you can get the Radeon HD desktop cards instead of G the old GeForce mobile cards, which were actually meant for notebooks. Uh, the third is that you can actually order it with both a solid state drive and a conventional drive. It's really no feat of engineering, but it does allow you to harness both the speed of an SSD and the capacity of a conventional drive. So one of the first things we really love about the 27-inch iMac is this gorgeous display. Uh, unlike most displays in the size, 27 inches, it's actually not 1080p. Apple has gone above and beyond uh, to 2560 by 1440 pixels, which is huge. And it really shows up in how smooth and crisp the text looks. Uh, it's also an IPS display, which stands for in-plane switching, but you don't really need to know that. It basically means that you can view this from any angle and it looks fantastic. An LED backlight also means that when you wake this from sleep, it reaches full brightness immediately. You don't have to wait for a tube to warm up. So our iMac actually came equipped with a 256 gigabyte solid state drive, and that has re resulted in some amazing boot times. We're actually gonna do one for you here and time it and show you so you can see how fast it is for yourself. So I hit the desktop there in 19.4 seconds, which, judging by anything Windows 7 can offer, uh, absolutely destroys it, basically. Um, we have not seen any Windows 7 notebook that can do this, desktop, notebook, whatever. Um, I think the closest we got was actually about 38 seconds from a main gear machine that also used solid state drives in a RAID array, two of them, and it couldn't even come close to this. So boot time that quick is amazing. So this iMac actually came equipped with the ATI Radeon HD 5750 card, which has a gigabyte of dedicated graphics memory, uh, and that gives it some pretty fantastic gaming performance. Obviously on OS X there aren't that many games to play, but what games you do have, it plays really, really well. We actually have Half-Life 2 Episode 2 pulled up here, uh, and you'll notice the frame rate is great. I mean, this plays silky smooth, and this is running on the native resolution of this giant screen with every single option at high. And you probably can't see in this shot, but the actual frames per second we're getting here hovers in the 50s and 60s, really doesn't get any lower than the 40s, um, which is pretty amazing considering how much we have this thing cranked up right now. So we didn't find too many things not to like about the iMac, but if we did have to criticize something, it would definitely be the keyboard and mouse. Uh, we're really not too fond of these, either of them. Uh, the keyboard is obviously truncated. There's no number pad. Apple av actually advertises that as a feature. We don't see the point, especially when, obviously, your monitor is taking up this much desktop space. You have more room. Uh, the keyboard actually looks comically small in front of the monitor. Uh, and the key presses are really not very satisfying either. It's not a great keyboard. Uh, it looks nice and that's about it. The same kind of goes for the Magic Mouse, which in our own separate review of it, we also sort of knocked it. It's just not comfortable to hold. I mean, this really doesn't approach anything like what your hand looks like. Um, and the multi-touch gestures that it does do are not very easy to execute. So one other caveat we have to mention here, as with most Apple products, is price. This model as equipped would cost you $2,600. That's pretty steep. Obviously you do get the performance to go with it, but you have to keep in mind you're paying a little bit of a premium for the design. Uh, also, as with most all-in-one machines, keep in mind that when you go to upgrade this one in a few years, the 27-inch display doesn't go with it. It's stuck with the hardware. So it might not be as sound as an investment as a separate monitor and computer. So a few minor complaints aside, the next generation iMac actually adds quite a bit of performance to an already well-designed, proven package. If you don't mind the keyboard and mouse, or wouldn't mind replacing them, the next generation iMac is one of the best looking and best performing all-in-one machines on the market.